बहुत अधिक प्रसन्न हो गया है तो इन सब का उत्तर मैं देने की स्थिति में रहूंगा या नहीं दे पाऊंगा मुझे मालूम नहीं पिछले बातों से कुछ शैक्षणिक एकेडमिक के मैटर्स हैं आई विल एड्रेस दैन ब्रीफली इन द बिगिनिंग to express the uh, nature of uh, interdependent origination many words have been used interconnectedness interdependence sambandh se astitva all these words actually in the sanskrit शब्द रचना प्रतीत्य समुत्पन्न या प्रतीत्य समुत्पाद ऑल इंक्लूडेड इन दैट चंद्र कीर्ति द ग्रेट बुज स्कॉलर हु हैव कमेंटेड ऑन नागार्जुन हैव कमेंटेड अबाउट द वर्ल्ड कंस्ट्रक्शन ऑफ प्रतीत्य समुत्पाद about 15 pages in his uh, commentary and uh, that is according to the uh, sanskrit uh, shabd rachna sanskrit mein kaise wo mood chunte hain aur uske sath kaun sa pate judte hain aur usse kya arth nikalte hain so in that matter interconnectedness is also included interdependence is also included samband was also included se astitva is not completely included because it is uh, coexistence coexistence can be without depending to each other independently the two things can exist without uh, harming to each other so that is interdependent that is not included in the interdependence otherwise the connectedness dependence and samband all these are necessary to understand what is the uh, connotation of interdependently originated pratyatya sam utpan so that is uh, a just a casual remark then uh, we have also talked about uh, the situation of the world multipolar or unipolar this is also a modern word now we use it uh, for everything alternatively and uh, our mind is thinking that the world either a multipolar kind of world or unipolar kind of world but from the buddhist or indian view point there should not be any polar world should be remain without any pulling or pushing it should remain as it is polar pushing both are external factors which is interfering the naturalness naturalness i don't know so what is correct or not sahajta jo prakriti ne jis duniya ko उत्पत्ति किया है वो उसी रूप में बिना कोई खेचतान के पुश और पुल की रहने देना वो प्रकृति के नियम के साथ चलने का होता है अगर उसको पुश करेंगे पुल करेंगे पुश और पुल दोनों एक उद्देश्य होता है 
वो कर्ता जो हैं वो अपने स्वार्थ सिद्ध करने के लिए ही करते हैं तो इसलिए चाहे यूनिपोलर होगा चाहे मल्टीपोलर होगा जब तक वहाँ पर कोई पुलर रहेंगे तो सेजता का समाप्त हो जाएंगे अब अभी की जो प्रश्न के संबंध में अगर मैं कोई छुटा नहीं हो तो एक एक करके निवेदन करूंगा चतुर्श पुरुषार्थ ये भारत की बहुत पुराना विचार है पता नहीं कब उत्पन्न हुआ गा वैदिक परंपरा से लेकर के बौद्ध परंपरा तक सब लोगों ने पुरुष अर्थ में चार वस्तु निर्धारित किया है एक जीवन के लिए टू एंजॉय द लाइफ कम टू गिव दिस एंजॉयमेंट नीड सम मींस अर्थ अर्थ मस्ट बी अर्न थ्रू राइट मींस जिसको बौद्ध परिभाषिक शब्द में समय के आजीविका इसका शब्द क्या समय का आजीविका एन आजीविका विच इज अर्न थ्रू नो वायलेंट मींस एंड विदाउट एक्सप्लोइटिंग एनी वन नेचर और पर्सन दैट इज समय का आजीविका एंड थ्रू दैट समय का आजीविका you can enjoy all the comforts of this life but that is not enough for a able person purusha either here the purusha does not mean male male female ke purusha nahi hai here purusha means a person a person in the form of a human being have a greater potential so that greater potential should not be completely used for just earning the calm and earth the worldly pleasures and the means for that that is the immediate requirement you can achieve then but ultimate is to get freedom from the bhava chakra at this moment everybody is uh, bind in the bhava chakra that means you accumulate karma and that karma gives you birth and rebirth and rebirth so therefore you are not able to free from the uh, bondage of karma and klesha klesha means uh, negative emotions negative emotions causes karma and karma causes the bondage of the sansara so the ultimate aim of this uh, uh, ultimate end of the uh, life is uh, to get moksha from the bhava chakra the will of the birth and rebirth and for that you need to practice the dharma dharma is a word which has 10 different connotations explained by the shastras and it can be considered as religion it can be considered as a law it can be considered as a um uh, behavior or responsibility duty there are many it goes many things and here the dharma within the chaturush purusharth dharma is referring to spirituality adhyatmik vidya spirituality does not necessarily mean the english word religion the religion and dharma is a quite uh, 
the connotation is quite different and the among the chatur purusha earth chatur purusha earth the dharma is more towards the responsibility duty and uh, to look into words to deal with the inner self so then nagarjun says if you look for a happy life the come and earth is almost sufficient if you look for a meaningful purposeful life then you need all the four and not only that the four shall have to be governed by the dharma by the right behavior and performing one's own all responsibilities and in buddhist connotation responsibility has a broadly two thing responsibility for particular entities and the second is universal responsibility the small responsibilities responsibility towards family towards kutumb towards immediate society that is a less important responsibility responsibility towards the universe that's mostly towards the nature <coughs> the pervasive time and space or all the uh, uh, basic elements we have also responsibility to all of them the universal responsibility so therefore come earth and moksha all the three must be uh, covered within the uh, larger framework of uh, dharma so i did not said any riti riti is uh, riti rivaj uh, habits or custom or system that is something different nature the dharma connotation of dharma in the shastras do not refer to a riti there can be riti which is in accordance to the dharma there can also be riti which is against the dharma so they shall have to be the dharma is more pervasive world so that's my understanding then the question when we are agitated our mind is uh, not peaceful how we can uh, bring a peace of mind that's a very difficult question i have no shortcut or a kind of uh, methodology to bring a peace of mind immediately by taking one pill you will have a peace of mind i don't there's any that kind of uh, method which i know of but this question is asked by many people to me also by many people ask this question some people are really suffering from uh worry or restlessness uh, anger sorrow so they also ask and so also in generally also people ask how to bring peace of mind so today there are many meditation shops and uh, practice of mindfulness and so on and so forth 
many of them from the Buddhist uh, tradition. Many others are from Vedic tradition. They are very popular in uh, Western countries. But I don't know how much these methods are workable. Shantideva has put it in uh, disturbed by some problem. You must analyze whether your problem is uh, solvable or not solvable. It has any remedy or not. If your problem has a remedy, you can do, you can solve that problem, then why you should worry? Do the remedy and solve the problem. If your problem is unsolvable, there's no remedy, then what is the use of worry? <laughs> then you live with it, accept it. So for me, it is uh, quite effective when we are facing a lot of problems. For example, myself as ordinary Buddhist monk, many times has to go through a lot of unpleasant things. So I always, uh, His Holiness also tells me, remember the Shantideva, and I remember Shantideva, and to uh, analyze whether the problem is uh, any remedy or not. No remedy, then okay, we shall face with it, live with it, otherwise we shall find the remedy. Whatever we do, we have an expectation of the result. And uh, that gives uh, nirasha or some kind of depression, unpleasant things. So this is uh, Indian way of thinking or Indian adhyatmic inner sciences notion that work is your duty. The result you have no concern. This is the essence of the teaching of Gita. Gita is a thick book, but if you put it into one sentence, in English, it was translated as uh, work is thy duty, reward thy no concern, something like that. I do not remember exactly the words. So that is in a way our daitwa is uh, to perform the work, the process properly, and the result we should not be any expectation. And also in the Buddhist way of putting it is that whatever you do, some positive work, there should not be a expectation of result or reward. Result here refers to uh, if you do some good thing this life, you will get the result in the next life. So this is a karam or a karam fal thuri. If you are expecting the good good result in the next life, you are still in desire or immediate return, that is a reward. You do something good now, and tomorrow or day tomorrow, you get some reward to that. So this, both of these things are not positive deed. It is a kind of a trait. You do something and you expect something. 
give and take process in the positive work only doing only giving no expectation expectation are also two different kinds no work can be performed without knowing its uh, objectives even no violence thing why i am refrain from violence one thing is selfish if i do violence i will earn negative karma paap hoga uske natija humko bhogna padenge is janam mein ya agle janam mein ya hum violence karenge to aane ko nuksan hoga ahit hoga to isliye unke hit ke liye humko nahi varnas karna chahiye either swarth or parmarth this kind of objective is there but when you actually enter into the action the your own doing purpose is to perform an action of no violent and uh, not due to the expectation of the good result but to perform the process properly that's more important <clears throat> how to uh, get free from karta bhava this is a very deep kind of question an ordinary people even the sadak it's difficult to uh, get freedom from karta bhava to get freedom from karta bhava there are two different traditions according to different traditions there are different way of getting freedom from that one is uh, ishwar vade the other is an ishwar vade the entire indian philosophy or dharmic traditions are belonging to either of this so majority of the indian tradition belong to ishwar vade except two living traditions and one non living tradition two is the jainism and buddhism these two are an ishwar vade they are karma or karm phal vade and all the rest in the ancient charvak was also an ishwar vade so now there's no tradition of charvak followers are not no more present so among the anishur vadin jainism believes into the atma buddhism niratma so when we classify the traditions into the atma vadin or anatma vadin only buddhist or charvak were anatma vadin all the rest are atma vadi you have a, a kind of anubhuti the ishwar ishwar majority of the tradition says it is beyond our thought and imagination but you can have an anubhuti anubhuti of ishwar when you have anubhuti of ishwar and everything is uh, ishwar's creature 
created by the karta and if you have a real understanding or anubhuti of this then you will no no more uh, having the under the influence of uh, karta bhava kyunki karta hum nahi hain ishwar hain hum keval nimit hain is baat ko anubhuti hoga to wo karta bhav se chut jayega बौद्धों की दृष्टि से निरात्मा को साक्षात जब तक नहीं होंगे अब कर्ता भाव से मुक्त नहीं हो सकता है आत्मा रहित व्यक्ति के व्यवहारिक व्यक्ति जो आत्मा से रहित हैं उसको देखेंगे देन यू विल अंडरस्टैंड ऑल द actions and karma are coming through interdependently originative forces so in that matter you are not the uh, real karta karta bhav and atma bhav atma dharma goes all together when the atma dharma is uh, negated then you will know no more the karta bhav so these of things are very uh, advanced stage of adhyatmik sadhana so when you reach there you will experience at this moment there's not much use to uh, discuss these things academically then it may be only academic exercise have nothing to do with our own day to day life or experience <clears throat> now all three seeking um of course uh, the seeking of newness or novelty seeking is uh, not a human nature it is just conditioned and i think it is a product of modernity in the modernity people are indoctrinated to appear something unique there are two forces one is uh, to make uniformity and uh, within that uniformity each one also have the desire this is a contradictory because the whole modernity is uh, built of contradictions because in the modernity कोएजिस्टेंस और सहयोग के संभावना को नकार दिया है सहयोग की संभावना होगा तो वहाँ पर इंटर रिलेटेडनेस आएंगे इंटर रिलेटेडनेस जहाँ पर होंगे तो संबंध होंगे जहाँ संबंध ठीक से होगा तो वहाँ पर कंपटीशन और संघर्ष नहीं हो पाएगा कंपटीशन और संघर्ष जहाँ नहीं होगा तो मॉडर्निटी के एक मूल उद्देश्य है सामग्रियों को खपाने की कमजोर कराने की आदमी को कमजोमर बनाने के आदमी को कमजोर बनाने के लिए उनकी ग्रीज को अनलिमिटेडली बढ़ाना चाहिए उसको अनलिमिटेडली बढ़ाने के लिए उसको एक ही प्रकार से अपने को सब हटा करके सभी लोगों के वांट्स हैं उस पर ऊपर जा कर के एक वांटिंग की आदत हो तो इसलिए क्योंकि न्यूनेस के सीख में 
हर चीज कुछ दिन के लिए उपयोगी होता है फिर छूट जाता है पुराना जमाने में शू मेकर्स जूता बनाने वाले अपने समा को बिकने के लिए अरे भाई ये बहुत अच्छे हैं चार पाँच साल तक आपको चल जाएगा तो सोचते हैं खरीदने वाले सोचते हैं ये ठीक है बहुत पक्का है आजकल तो चार पाँच साल चलेगा तो उसको कौन खरीदेगा दस दिन के बाद तो उसका डिज़ाइन बदल जाएंगे शेप बदल जाएंगे तो ये तो दो तीन दिन के लिए चल चल चलें तभी ठीक है ऐसा सोचते हैं तो हर समय कोई न कोई जो अच्छे नए कपड़ा पहनने की जगह पर नए कपड़े को फटा करके बहुत ऊंचे दामों में बिकाते हैं और खरीदने वाले भी उसको बहुत अच्छा समझते हैं अब इसको रैशनैलिटी मान लिया जाए जींस के पैंट को फाट फाट करके पहना बहुत अच्छे हैं और उसको हजारों रुपया देना भी पड़े तो हम दे सकते हैं इस बार की सोच जो है यह रैशनैलिटी ऑर्डिनरी मिस ऑर्डिनरी रैशनैलिटी हैं उससे क्या दर्शाते हैं अगर पुराना जमाने में होगा तो बेवकूफ ही कहेंगे आज उसको बहुत एडवांस आदमी मानते हैं तो ये एक ही हो गया नॉ वायलेंस के विषय में मैं कल ठीक से नहीं कह पाए हो मैंने ये कहा था बौद्ध और जैन वायलेंस को कभी अनुमति नहीं देते हैं वायलेंस शत प्रतिशत निषेध है किसी भी रूप में वायलेंस सही काम नहीं हो सकते हैं और जैन बौद्ध के अतिरिक्त जो बाकी दर्शनों में धर्म परंपराओं में कभी कभी एक्सेप्शंस देते हैं ऐसा हो ऐसा हो तो आप वायलेंस भी कर सकते हैं धर्म युद्ध की बात होते हैं अगर धर्म की रक्षा के लिए आपको युद्ध भी करना पड़े बहुत लोगों को मरना भी पड़े आपको लड़ना चाहिए तो ये आ, अंतर हैं और उसके अतिरिक्त और कोई अंतर नहीं है बाय एंड लार्ज ऑल द ट्रेडिशंस आर गो इंकरेज फॉर द नॉन वायलेंस बिहेवियर एंड वन दी वेरी एक्सेप्शन केसेस यू मे इंटर्ज इन टू वायलेंस फॉर ए ग्रेट पर्पज एंड विथ ऑल्सो सेंस ऑफ सेल्फ सेक्रीफाइजिंग नॉ वायलेंस का कार्य कोई वीर आदमी कर सकते हैं कमजोर आदमी कोई बहुत शक्तिशाली आदमी कर सकते हैं कमजोर आदमी की हथियार नहीं है ये तो गांधी जी ने भी कहे हैं नॉ वायलेंस होना कमजोरी होने के लक्षण नहीं है कमजोर के कारण नॉ वायलेंस हो तो वो विवशता है नॉ वायलेंट नहीं है अंदर राग द्वेष और मानसिक हिंसा होते हुए भी बाहर शारीरिक रूप से हिंसा नहीं कर पाने वाले हैं वो कमजोर के लक्षण हैं वो जब तक अंदर उनकी द्वेष और क्रोध हैं तो उनका ऐश नॉ वायलेंस होता नहीं है गांधी जी के ग्राम स्वराज के सिद्धांत अगले पचास वर्षों में प्रासंगिक रहेंगे या नहीं रहेंगे ये प्रश्न थोड़ा इसका उत्तर ढूंढना सरल नहीं है गांव ही नहीं बचेगा तो गांव स्वराज कहाँ बचेंगे आजकल गांव 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 को 
शहर बनाने की चेष्टा हो रही है और वो गांव वाले भी चाहते हैं कि हम ग्रामीण ना रहें शहरी हो जाए और शासन भी चाहते हैं कि सब गांव को नगर बना दिया जाए जामपद बना दिया जाए यहाँ तथाकथित प्रजातंत्र हैं इसलिए जोर जबरदस्ती नहीं हो रही है चीन में बहुत सा गांव को उठा करके नए शहर में बसा दिया गया है विशेष रूप से जो नॉमड लोग हैं उनको नॉमड की लाइफ से उठा करके शहरी बना दिया है मकान दे देते हैं जमीन दे देते हैं वो अपने तंबू से उठा करके उसमें बसा देते हैं तो इसलिए ये जो ग्लोबलाइजेशन का प्रोसेस जैसा आज चल रहे हैं ऐसा चलते रहे तो अगले पचास वर्ष के बाद दुनिया में शायद गांव ना बचे तो गांव नहीं बचेंगे तो ग्रम स्वराज की बात भी नहीं बचेंगे गांधी जी के ग्राम स्वराज के सिद्धांत जिस परिभाषिक शब्दों से हम आज गांव को परिभाषित करते हैं ठीक उससे मत से या उसे कनोटेशन से शायद गांधी ने नहीं कहा था गांधी से बेसिक इनपुट वॉज डिसेंट्रलाइजेशन ऑफ द व्यवस्था जो सारे कम किसी भी क्षेत्र में चाहे शिक्षा हो चाहे स्वास्थ्य हो चाहे अर्थ हो वो सेंट्रलाइज नहीं होना चाहिए डिसेंट्रलाइज होना चाहिए तो डिसेंट्रलाइजेशन में भी गांधी जी का अपना एक सिद्धांत था कि मैं इसको डिसेंट्रलाइज नहीं मानता हूं कि केंद्र सरकार को या प्रांतीय सरकार को एक शक्ति दे दिया जाए सेंट्रलाइज शक्ति दे दिया जाए और वो टुकड़ा टुकड़ा करके गांवों को या पदों को जहाँ पदों को शहरों को बांट दिया जाए दिस इज नॉट ए डिसेंट्रलाइजेशन ऑफ गांधी साइडिया गांधी साइडिया डिसेंट्रलाइजेशन वाज द बेसिक लॉ द कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन मस्ट गिव डिसेंट्रलाइज व्यवस्था टू ऑल द विलेजेस एंड जान पादेश वेर एवर द ह्यूमन एविटेट्स आर देयर तो एक ही जगह सारे शक्ति संविधान या विधान के माध्यम से एक संस्था को दे देते हैं वो संस्था उसको टुकड़ा टुकड़ा करके बांट भी दिया जाए तो उसको वापस लेने की भी शक्ति उस संस्था के पास रहेंगे और हमेशा उस पर निर्भरता भी रहेंगे तो इसलिए अब इस लंबे बात हैं डिसेंट्रलाइजेशन का थ्योरी जो है ये इकोनॉमिक्स और पॉलिटिकल साइंस वाला अलग अलग बातों करते हैं तो उसमें हम जाने की आवश्यकता नहीं है लेकिन गांधी गांव को हमेशा गांव में रहना चाहिए ये तो शायद ना भी कहें लेकिन व्यवस्था एक तो नीड बेस व्यवस्था हो गांधी का एक मत तो ये था ग्रीड बेस व्यवस्था ना हो और वो लोकलाइज हो ये भी उसमें नहीं थे ग्लोबलाइजेशन के विरोध में लोकलाइजेशन का उनका जो जोर था और सेल्फ सफिशेंसी का भी अर्थ उसमें नहीं थे सेल्फ सफिशेंसी लोकलाइज लोकलाइज मीन्स द प्रोडक्शन एंड द रॉ मटेरियल एवरीथिंग ऑफ द लोकल एंड द वर्कर्स आल्सो लोकल 
and then that is a need base whatever real needs are there that much things can be produced or used so nothing can be depend at a long distance basis and a long distance so that was even this idea so i think uh, i have briefly addressed to uh, most of the questions if there has uh, left some question i apologize i do not remember or i have not uh, Uh, I have said at many times Gandhi was a, a staunch Mahatma Gandhi was a staunch Ishwarwadi and uh, his Ishwarwadi Astha was the source of his experiments with truth and therefore i would say we are a buddhist a kind of strange anishur vadi and yet greatly influenced by the gandhian principles gandhian thought and gandhian action the only ishur vadi or anishur vadi is uh, a source of intention but what intended and the action outcome of that intention is based on truth and no violence so there is no difference between the buddha's teaching and gandhian teaching so it is all equal so gandhi ji was a issue wadin that is uh, quite obvious from many of his writings and actions you can verify and in spite of that he have uh, at many times declared that the truth no violence and the issue all of them the same all kind of synonym truth and no violence is uh, two side of a coin and sometimes the issue and the no violence or issue or, uh, and the satya they are um, two side of one coin this this was gandhi's belief so we shall have to understand gandhi in that way but that make no difference so gandhi siddhant and action so we need not uh, go into that so coming back to uh, our three days deliberation um i would recommend the suggestions given by many participants participants that we should have a, a new kind of hindu swaraj which may not be called a hindu swaraj maybe a swaraj of mankind or swaraj of humanity something like that in which all the facets of uh, present situation and uh, the shortcomings of the present situation the modernity that need to be uh, prepared and for that all like minded people can contribute as uh, gupta ji have said this morning all people who are engaged in a different field of work can send a note and that can be compiled and then sent back to again to them and through that process we might able to uh, um compile a new kind of uh, 
a treatise on which all the like-minded people who are not satisfied or who are being tortured by modernization should read think and work together some people are working to oppose the globalization and recommend localization i know many people are throughout their life doing this work there are many other people who are struggling for preservation of environment degradation and uh, many people are working for eradication of poverty many people are working for protecting the jungles and uh, uh, ecosystem there are also many people who are working for um tribal rights and uh, local different minority communities right they also working with a good intention to those things and uh, many people are working to protect human right and uh, many people are working education value education or something new kind of education and many people are working religious harmony all of them are doing great things but very few of them realizing that all these problems are production of a result of the modernity that we need to uh, draw their attention unless they understood all these things are come out of modernity unless we uh, address to the uh, melody of modernity all our actions become symptom treatments so therefore i don't know if you people can think and uh, evolve some kind of method to educate them in this matter i shouldn't say to educate to draw their attention towards this fact and uh, that will be one of the immediate work we can do and we should do then the basic thing is a chit shuddhi yon sadhan shuddhi this is uh, gandhi's teaching i also use this word at many times chit shuddhi is an individual effort that is more easy to uh, achieve how to uh, cultivate a real compassionate mind loving kindness or maitri or karuna bhavana for that it is not an easy thing to uh, cultivate ourselves in these things so most of us are belonging to uh, some of the religious traditions or some of them not belonging to any religious tradition yet there are uh, you have the seed of compassionate mind one thing we must understand is uh, the human basic nature is uh, not aggressive and violent basic human nature is uh, compassionate and that we can see a child a newly born and uh, the loving connection between the mother and the child is with the basic human nature therefore the humanity has uh, the capacity to cultivate the basic nature 
into a day-to-day life habit. So for that, you can read, you can learn from your own traditions and also you may attend some kind of courses. So we, the group, may also conduct a kind of short courses how to uh, cultivate compassionate mind. Because without compassionate mind, to the people to whom we are going to oppose, then our work will not be a, a non-violent one. So this is most important. And the Southern Shuddhi is sometimes more difficult because it is not an individual business. It is uh, belonging to organizations or groups or uh, some kind of uh, structured things. And today, in the global globalized world, should the sadhan, particularly the economic uh, means, is very difficult to keep uh, clean. So for that we have to be more careful and it needs more in-depth discussions and the examination of everyone's source of income or source of sadhan. So this is more complicated matter. So for that also we should uh, make small groups to discuss these things and uh, to examine our own past experience and uh, how we can keep the Sadhana Shuddhi in the future. So a huge uh, responsibility we are going to take on our own shoulders in the future for the sake of entire sentient beings. So the two basic things Chit Shuddhi and Sadhana Shuddhi is uh, the key factor whether we are able to do something or we are not able to do something. So this we need to put more attention, more study in depth, more discussion. So now the time is up. So I'll stop my voice here and uh, I apologize for not being able to uh, with you tomorrow <clears throat> and I hope we can meet again more frequently in the future and perhaps we can do something jointly without any expectation of a result or reward, we may able to stay with the forces and with the means, with a pure mind and a pure means. Thank you very much.